Ruth Jones McClendon sections Women, Wine, and Art with the fabulous Miss Barbara Felix. I am President Tanya Anderson here in the San Antonio Ruth Jones McClendon section. And I would like to just say again, welcome, welcome, welcome to our first, that is our first virtual experience. We have special guests here today. I'd like to welcome our state convener, Dr. Molly Johnson, and our other presidents throughout Texas. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed today's presentation. We will get started right away. I will be introducing our mass mistresses ceremonies, our very own sister, Stephanie Collier. Take it away, Stephanie. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you all for sharing your evening with us. I couldn't think of a better way to celebrate Women's History Month and Black women than to spend an evening discussing our very own Barbara Felix exhibit. So, so cheers. Cheers to everyone. Cheers. Let's sip on that. So before I get to sipping too much, uh, let me introduce the woman of the hour or the two hours, artist Barbara Felix. Hi everyone. Hello. Nice so to be, a bit. To say nice to be a new member. Yes, thank you for joining. She's a, a new member of the Ruth Jones McClendon section in San Antonio. Uh, Barbara is not only my cousin, but she is just a fabulous artist in San Antonio. She's a contemporary figurative artist. She received her BFA in graphic communication at Texas State University in 1991, where her coursework fired her love of the human figure and inspired her long pursuit to work as an artist. She began taking community classes at the Southwest School of Art in 2006 and after receiving a Best of Show Award in 2007 at the All Art All Student Art Show, she began a more dedicated pursuit of art, receiving a certificate in drawing, painting, and printmaking in 2013. She has an ongoing series of works, which include Bailando con mi misma, or Dancing with Myself, which explores relationships, gender, and her biracial identity body language and sensuality in mixed media monotype prints. I'm proud to have one of those. The Color of Women, which expands to celebrate diverse female connections in mixed media collage portraits that incorporate audio and her newest and latest series, The Glorious Way She Moves, Black Venus, where she celebrates multiple nuances of beauty in women of color through multi-layered portraits. She has work in public and private in collections, and she's received a first place for 2D art at the Round Rock Arts Reimagine Exhibition in 2019 for her portrait of Thelma and Andrews in, I can't remember who else, Barbara? At any rate, Barbara, Barbara is- Long. Sorry, this is Barbara Long. Uh, she's a self-taught, she is self-taught in animation, video and audio editing, and we'll have a sneak peek of a little bit of, of something special she's working on at the end of our presentation. Her animation and performance videos have been screened at festivals and exhibitions across San Antonio and the U.S. She is an active member of the Contemporary Art Month or CAM as an executive board member where she promotes contemporary artists in San Antonio. Um, I can't say this next one, Barbara. It's the Gillen. Yeah. Is it Gentile? Gentileshi. Gentileshi Ages Gallery Association, which promotes women artists across Texas and the San Antonio Ethnic Art Society, nurturing young artists of color through scholarship opportunities and supporting artist members uh, with exhibitions. And so with that, let's let's get started with the presentation. Are you ready to go, Barbara? Sure. 
So we'll give a second to put up the presentation. While they're loading the presentation, that was a fabulous introduction, MC, Mistress of Ceremonies. We appreciate you so much. Uh, I would also like to advise you all that we are recording um, and this is being streamed uh, for our um, audiences to review later. So if you would like to put your picture up, you may, um, but we appreciate your attendance. Thank you. And while we're going through the presentation, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in the chat box, whether you are on Zoom or joining us through one of the other social media apps, and we will come back to it towards the end of our presentation. We are ready, Madam Tech. Give me one moment, it is loading. Oh, wow. So we have, it uh, looks like Dr. Lewis on from the Austin section. Yes. I have to tell you a secret, Dr. Lewis. I live in Austin. <laughs> I'm in South Austin, uh, but I'm from San Antonio. So, <laughs> and I see you, Dr. Molly. I'm so glad to see your face. It's my pleasure. My mom is uh, Sandra Gunter. Hey. So she, she I, I'm not sure if she's on, I can't tell, I can't see her name, uh, but not thank yet. you all for your support. Okay, we're ready to advance the slides. So, um, Barbara, before we get too deep into, into the slides, um, let's talk about what inspired you to create these, this fabulous collection of nine portraits. Um, well, so I had been doing uh, my self-portrait series for a few years, <clears throat> and I really was just partially tired of uh, painting myself or drawing myself. <clears throat> I really love... Um, I, and then the other thing is that I, I really cherish my female friendships and women in my life. And so the idea of painting other women was, uh, had been brewing in my, in my brain for quite some time. And um, dance has been a big part of my work, um, partially because I was in a car accident in 1982. I broke my back and I, I had just taken my first jazz class just before at San Antonio College, just before that accident happened. And I was really good in the class and I was really kind of thinking, well, maybe I'll do some more dance classes or something. And that got, got killed. So <clears throat> I winded up um, uh, just, you know, I could dance socially. Luckily I wasn't paralyzed, I was nearly paralyzed, but I wasn't. And so I could dance socially and stuff, but I could never take like professional dance classes. I have issues with my left foot and my back. And so, um, dance winded up, you know, being something that I could kind of do vicariously. I, and it was really later in my life that I was watching shows like, so you think you could dance really was the big one because that was the young aspiring professional dancers that I couldn't be that I was watching them. And I was thinking, God, had I been born in a different time and had I been, uh, and had, I didn't have these issues with my body, you know, maybe I could be, you know, one of them. And I just started wanting to draw what I was seeing. So dance has been a, a big theme in my work ever since I started drawing uh, uh, dancers, other dancers. And so uh, I thought about, um, oh, I, so I had somewhere in here, I had been, uh, I'd started the portrait series of the color of women, which is the, it's pairs of women in conversation. And uh but I also had at the same time the idea of the dancing just, but it wasn't really gelled. So as I invited some women over, some of them I was gonna do just seated poses on stools. I had already done 
two for the university hospital of my sister-in-laws who are in medicine. I painted, I painted a portrait of my father for a clinic that's named after him. He's a, a Robert L. M. Hilliard. Um, uh, a lot of people who know him really well know him as Bob um, or Robert L. And uh, yeah, and I, and I, uh, they paid me by me doing, uh, giving them two other portraits. They didn't pay me for my dad's portrait because of conflict of interest, but they paid me for two other portraits. And I thought my dancing self portraits were too sexy for a hospital. So I thought, Oh, let me paint, let me paint my sister-in-laws. They're both in medicine. And so I did seated poses of them. And so I invited a few more women to a space I had to be able to take photos. And it was Gracie Poe really um, was the first person who, she just started dancing. I had uh, a song on, I had music playing because I don't like to be in a quiet space. And she started dancing and I asked her, can I videotape you? Can I film you? And she said, sure, you know, so she let me film her and I never took seated poses of her. Her dancing was so awesome that I just was like, oh, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do something. And she's different. one of the featured. She's one of the featured um, portraits in in this in this series, right? Yes. So the first, the two of them that are in this series that I paint that I photographed or videotaped in that first session was um, Gracie Poe and Rosalind Anderson. There was also Beverly Green, but I just ran out of time. I couldn't get her uh, portrait done for this this show in time. But uh, so they were, you were really in, inspired. This series was really inspired uh, by how you you saw her moving and and so that's that was just the spark that lit the flame, right? Yeah, it, it was a spark that lit the flame. So then I think it was almost two years later that um, I had decided that I wanted to do more women, and so I I had I happened to have a space I could use to uh, photograph. I had a friend join me because I wanted to get as many women as I could in a one weekend. I'd rented camera equipment and I only had it for the weekend. So I'm like, how many women can I get in this, in these two days? So I, I had, I think I photographed 24 or 26 women that weekend. And, um, they, we, I had, I didn't know if I was going to do the still seats, seated uh, poses of portraits or if I was going to do dancing, but I just wanted to get, everything I could possibly get to work with. And then I would decide later what I would do. So I had a green screen set up in one room and I had um, photo sessions in another room. So let's, let's talk about that. Is that what we're seeing here on the screen with Isatu? Yes, you're seeing my friend, Shell Delaney, who I invited to help me because she's always willing to help me with anything, any of my crazy ideas. And well, she's uh, the photographer. Shell is the photographer and Shell. Isatu is seated. Yes, I told her what I basically what I was looking for was um, uh, women with no shoes on because I I love drawing the full figure. I love drawing hands and feet. I love I think um, I think uh, when it comes to um, our bodies, they say so much about who we are. I know a lot of portrait artists focus mostly on the face and eyes because that does you know eyes tell a lot about a person's. Uh, spirit, the smile, you know, really says a lot about their personality or their, their, their mouth and eyes, whether or not they're smiling or not. But I like the idea that your whole body also tells a story about who you are um, through the way you move it. And so that's why I asked them to dance and uh, also besides the seated poses. So I wanted these okay. beautiful, uh, we had all, we had like three or four different stools for the seated poses. And uh, really, on, with the seated poses, I like, like the way when women are balancing themselves on a stool, the shapes your feet make when you're trying to do that wind up being really beautiful, I think, to me, in my opinion. So that's why I asked women to be barefooted. And then with the dancing, I had a green screen. The green screen went, it, it, it covered the floor and the wall behind them. And I couldn't so have my heels tearing up that up. So, <laughs> so let's, let's advance the slides a little up. Oh. This next slide, please. So yeah. there, there's the, the green screen. Yeah, this is the green and, screen setup. And why did you use a green screen for the instead of just the, the portraits? 
uh, because there's, I, I felt like there might be other possibilities of things I could do with the foot video footage, uh, including being able to remove the background and doing some experimental video work with the footage as well as the paintings I was going to embark on. And so, so that's the video, the, the video that you took was of the women dancing, right? Yes, I shot, I had two cameras. I mean, I had me holding a, my iPhone. I really used my iPhone and my iPad to videotape everything. I had the video, I had the iPad on a tripod and I had my iPhone in my hand with a, with a stabilizer so that I could move around with one of them and then the other one was going to be stationary. Okay, to to so away. when when the ladies showed up, did you did you let them pick the songs or did you pick the song? I let them pick the songs, but some of them didn't know what to pick and told me to pick the song. So, um, but a lot of them did pick their songs. And so I just went out to um, either iTunes or uh, Amazon and, you know, I, I think I either bought or the track or if I couldn't find it to just stream, then I bought the track uh, for them to dance to. And I only danced to one song. It really, I tried to make it like, you're going to dance to this one song and whatever I get, I get. We're not going to do take after take after take after take. I want this to be kind of spontaneous. And I was pretty confident that in the length of a three to four minute song, that even if they were nervous in the beginning, by the end of the song, they would kind of open up. And it, it pretty much happened to everybody that they would start stretching their arms a little bit more or whatever. They'd loosen up. They'd forget that I was in the room a little bit. Um, and so that's why I, 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 and plus I was trying to get so many women through. So that's why I couldn't do a lot of takes. So this series is nine, nine portraits. Uh, and, and you have a range of ages that are, are reflected in the portraits. So was there anything that, that you found was a common thread through, through all the, the portraits? Like what uh, made you focus on black women, you know, the, or the black Venus? So um, black women were the very first women that I wanted to draw and paint. My, I, my dad used to take me to a lot of cotillion balls and stuff. I would, you know, Van Cortland, I'd been to the Alpha Toy Dance and I'd been to various other um, social events with him when he was alive. We, I was always a guest at his table and I loved watching the women dance. And I, you know, especially on the, 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 the like the Van Cortland ball, where you'd have the young uh, debutantes out on the floor along with the senior women and, and, uh, and every range in, in between. Didn't have so many kids at, at that event, but you know, but I still had, was a pretty big range of women. And I just thought everybody was so beautiful and elegant and, and I just loved the poise and, and the attitudes on the dance floor, the strength that I saw in the Yes, women. the attitudes, right? <laughs> Yeah, I just loved it. I loved people just just getting out there and just doing their thing, you know, uh, just doing their thing and and together. Well, and I'm, and I'm, that, gonna sip on, I'm sipping on that. <laughs> I just wanted to draw it. I just wanted to draw it. So I, I've been wanting for a long time. I used to actually sit and do these really rough sketches of like the debutantes uh, when they were going through. I would draw a little on a knack and then whatever I could piece mm -hmm. of paper I could find at the ball while I was sitting there. Um, now, er earlier this year, um, well, the exhibit opened late January. It's going to run through the end of this this week, this coming week. No, actually, uh, it extended it, so it's actually oh, going wonderful. On, yeah, it's going on through April twenty third now because there's three events happening at the Carver, and they really wanted some artwork up for those events. So, so ladies, ladies, this is this exhibition is at the Carver Cultural Community Center in our hometown of San Antonio, Texas on Hackberry Street. And, you know, an interesting note about that place, uh, when my mom was, was coming up, that's the only place that they could go to for like social dances and high school dances, proms, et cetera, because of segregation. And so, um, you know, I really, really appreciate you all showing up for Barbara. She couldn't have like her, her usual artist opening and you know, so for that her artwork to be at the culture at the Carver Cultural Center, you know, a place where our parents and grandparents, you know, the only place that they could go to have these special occasions and memories, it just brings it full circle that 
that she and I are, are able to share this with you all this evening, and especially through the National Council of Negro Women. It, it's very, very special to us. So thank you all again for, for sharing these this evening with us. And so Barbara, um, late January, uh, Dream Week was going on in San Antonio too. And so this year the theme was uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So, you know, that had an extra special meaning for, for especially for Black women and women of color uh, this year, because we, we were all wearing our pearls. You know, I got my pearls sitting here next to me. I, I took them off because it was going to be too much with, <laughs> with my NCW shirt. Uh, but how, how special was that for you to also be participating in Dream Week? Oh, it was really huge uh, when I realized that it was happening. At the same time, I immediately wanted to get on the Dream Week calendar. And to get on the calendar, I had to actually write, we had to write something. Um, I had to write something about how my show aligned with <laughs> the, the uh, Dream Week. And I winded up using that as the artist statement in the gallery. Um, I, have an, I had another artist statement, a shorter one, but I winded up using that one because I just thought it was more... Um, I just thought it was a, a, a more uh, important uh, statement because it really spoke to the women I was painting and the kind of women that I want to paint and, and draw and work with. And so I know I love dancing and, you know, anytime I, I hear music come on, I automatically start moving. Um, so let's go through, let's advance to the next slide so we can take a look at another Part of the process here. So these first few images you've been seeing are of um, one of my muses, Isatu Sidibe Blanton, who, um, so I told the women, you know, come in whatever you want to wear. You can be as dressed up or as casual as you want to be, whatever, you know, this is about you and your personality. So um, Gra uh, Gracie Poe and Isatu both came in African dress and uh, they, uh, they winded up, you know, Gracie, actually, I had already been working on Gracie's portrait. Uh, I was taking a class at the Southwest School, drawing large scale, and I decided to use her, the, the images I had of Gracie Poe for that class. And I was getting very uh, great feedback from everybody in the class, the, the students, uh, students who weren't in the class, people who would pass by and see, because I was able to leave it on the wall and work on it kind mm -hmm. of at class. And so I, I had already, once I had that, and then I saw, I saw too with her dress, I'd like, and I was thinking about the Carver space because I had, I had already been approved to show there. I knew exactly the size I needed to make Isatu's, that those two were going to be my big star pieces on the two longest walls of the gallery. So um, Isatu, we saw her picture at the beginning. And so this is, these are the, the pictures that you took or that what you grabbed from the video of her dancing, right? Yes, these are some of them. I had a lot. I mean, really from a video file, <clears throat> there's literally thousands of photos you could grab, <laughs> thousands. Okay. So, I had to so let's- through. I had to sit through and kind of like pick what were my favorite ones. And I could probably go and look at again today and pick completely different favorite pictures because there's just so much wonderful um for all these women there's so many mm -hmm. uh, wonderful um photos of them in their movement okay so let's let's advance the slide to the next one so now so we're this, getting into my drawing process here and what Which, do we see around the edge is that is that your tape your artist tape yeah, because I these are this is large the uh the the this is only part of the drawing of the painting mm -hmm. on this that you're seeing here. Uh, it's probably maybe two thirds of it, maybe a little, a little more than half of it. Um, and it's 10, it's, sorry, it's five foot tall by 11 foot wide. Um, okay. So it filled a wall. I mean, literally my, my studio wall, uh, if, if my garage hadn't been, you know, a little bit smaller, we had to move all kinds of steps for me to get that, this up to work on it. I did start it at the Southwest School but then COVID hit, so I didn't finish it there. I finished it on, on my own at home. So let's and advance I, to the next slide so that, so that everyone can, can uh, understand the scale. So um, this, this is 
this is the, the sketch and the painting. This is now the full painting, or is that still you working? That's just me touching up something. So I, I'm very, um, there's some, there's a technique that I do when I work, when I'm working, um, it's called gestural drawing. It's, uh, so you, you kind of look at the painting, at the picture while you're drawing, but you're drawing really fast and really loose. And, um, and people love my line work. They love the way I do that. So I wanted these drawings, these paintings to have a mix of, of those drawings and painting in them at the same time. So that's why you see parts of them that are not painted because I want it to have the drawings in it as well. And it's watercolor. So because I'm working vertically, typically when you work with watercolor, um, uh, you're working on a, something way smaller and you're, you got the, the board is just slightly tilted just very slightly tilted. It's not vertical like that. So when I'm painting, a lot of times drips happen. And I decided to, you know, usually just allow the drips to be to be part of the painting and not worry about trying to wipe them out. These this paper surface that I'm working on, it's a plastic paper. It's called UPO. It's a paper that is used by where it was originally designed for advertising for signs. And somewhere along the line, watercolorists and other artists discovered this paper. Um, but, uh, and like it because um, the, the, the pigment can't completely soak in. It barely soaks in. It actually sits on the surface and you can get it to do very unusual things sometimes depending on where you're working. I'm limited in, in some of the techniques I can do with it on, a, on something this big that's hanging vertically, but there's still something about that paper that I really, that I really love. And there's also things about that paper that are really challenging to work with. It's, it's a, it was a, sometimes, you know, I, uh, I was, ex a lot of this is, ex I was experimenting on the paper. I was trying different things. And uh, sometimes some things were more successful than others, but I just, you know, would work through it. Um, a lot of problem solving, um, how to make, how to, like if, if the photo had the person moving and there was, their hand was blurred, how do I make the blur look? How do I make it look like a blur on this paper? You know, that kind of thing is some of the stuff I was trying to figure out. She, uh, I saw she talked a lot about her dress being, in, uh, being from her family. It's her, I think, uh, her, her grandmother or an aunt, somebody in her family made this dress for her. And, um, and it's from, it's from West Africa. Yes. And, and she talked about the indigo dye in the dress, the indigo being a very important color. So I went out and I found indigo paint. <laughs> so I could try to be uh, as accurate with that since that color was so uh, prominently spoken of uh, by her on the, on the dress. Let's move to the next slide so we can get a closer look at the painting. Well, the colors are so vivid and, and I see there are um, some other shades like it looks like spots and uh, maybe it's a reddish color or yellowish yeah, color. It, it was, I was just trying to add a little bit of a contrast to it. So mm -hmm. I did splashing, I splashed the color. Um, you like left it really wet and I just flinged it. <laughs> just flinged it onto the, um, to the surface. I did it during the, draw, the early drawing stage um, before I even started putting the blue, the blue color on. And I didn't worry about being like super, super accurate on every single dress. I, like I said, I wanted some spontaneity and experimentation and stuff to be happening. Um, so, um, uh, and then uh, just trying to, uh, my favorite part was painting the, the scarf. <laughs> I loved painting the scarf, because, the scarf because the painting was so wide. I really li literally had to like move. I had to like move my body way across the, the, the uh, paper, you know, I mean, it wasn't just like standing there drawing little shapes. I, I really had to be in, my body had to be in motion, my arm, my whole body when I was painting those. So I really, that was my favorite part of this. And her portrait too. I loved doing her portrait. Um, yeah, you know, when, um, in looking at this now and I'm thinking about uh, Dream Week and Life, Liberty and the Pursuit of Happiness and looking at her shawl, it kind of reminds me of, of a flag of, of the American flag, but but uh, more so like an African American flag, you know, because we 
uh, those those waves in in the indigo um, we we're, it connects all of us um, that that are here. Okay, let let's move to the next slide. We'll we'll take a look at it, at another painting in a second. This yeah, is I, a, I wanted to give you a really good close up of uh, I think this of of the four three or four portraits that are on this painting. This one is my favorite. <laughs> the way this one came out, I love this painting of her. So you have a, a like a screen grab of the video there next to the painting? Like uh, no, it's not. It's just, a, it's yeah, it's a screen grab from one of the films where, where I just took the green screen out of it. This is what mm -hmm. happened. I, I'm able to take that green screen out and I can um, do other things with the images if I want to. There's one more slide in this series. Advance the slides, please. So yeah, this is a view of it in the gallery, uh, of the front of the gallery, uh, looking you know out the, the, the entry doors. And so you get to see how I have the two paintings flanked that were the two longest ones where they're both wearing African dress. The styles of the two paintings though are very different um, because as I kept working on these paintings, my method, kept evolving and it probably will still even as I paint the, the other 16 women that I have to paint. <laughs> okay. All right, next slide, please. So these are, this out. I'm moving to Gracie Poe. I set these these photos up in the deck so that it's almost like I'm, I'm taking you through a walk through the gallery from uh, starting with uh, Isatu's portrait all the way around. So the next one is we're, we're in front of is Gracie Poe. She's the first woman who danced for me. She's the one who inspired this whole project for me. Um, I know Miss Gracie, and she she dances at everything, and she dances every song. She <laughs> she can't sit still for for anything. Let's go to the next slide. Yeah, she's seventy nine years old, and she is a dynamo <laughs> when it comes to dancing. Just but just very regal energy. Her energy was, uh, and, and her spirit, just a uh, vivacious, just a vivacious woman. Okay, next slide. Now, uh, just a note about the portraits. These are also at, at the gallery as well, correct? The, the portraits yes. of the women, not the paintings, but, uh, yeah. but the portraits, the, the, the photograph pictures, portrait. the photographs. Uh, I, I invited Shelly Delaney to uh, show her work with me. She didn't charge me for taking the photos or anything, and I thought it would be, nice to give her a chance to show, since I didn't wind up painting uh, from the still shots. Although I told her mm -hmm. that I will have the ability to do that if I want to, I can paint from them if I want to, but but I wanted, I, I thought it would be a nice pairing to have the actual photos in the, in the show with the artwork. So, um, so yeah. So what we're looking at is a close up of your initial drawing. What, what do you draw with? Uh, so it's it's a it's a black fat crayon watercolor. Uh, it's kind of almost like a crayon or graph. It's, they consider it watercolor graphite, and uh, I dip it in water or I use a paintbrush on it. And uh, most of the time, I do I just dip it in water and I just draw really loosely. So on this particular drawing, I was actually dancing while I was drawing this one. That's why it doesn't have as much accuracy as other portraits that you'll see. It's very expressionistic, this method that I used on Gracie Pose. And really just trying to, in my own way, capture her energy that she had. Her, her uh, you know, she was, she's a very expressive dancer. And um, actually these portraits all have audio that go with them. I interviewed all of the, the models and she partic in particular talks about you know that she when it comes to dancing she cannot be contained her husband's always trying to get her to follow dance moves and she's like but i just can't i'm a free spirit i can't be contained i love uh listening to her story about that so you mentioned it that you did audio clips and so if if our audience wants to take a look can they still look at this online through the carver yes it's actually Actually going to be up perpetually. The Carver is not, even though the show will come down, the exhibition, the virtual gallery, they don't have an end date for when yet at this time. They said it, it, it might be up for a year or maybe two, who knows. Um, but because they, they, they like, uh, and actually they've invited me when I have another set of paintings to show them in the same space again. 
Um, so I, I know they're pretty limited for on visitors because of COVID. So um, if anybody wants to see these or take a look and listen, um, you can visit the website and we'll drop the we'll drop a link to the website in the chat box towards the end of, of the evening. Uh, let's advance the slides. Um, yeah, that was a close up. Let's take a, a, a wider view of, of the portrait. Yeah, this is the this is the finished painting, which again, I, I like to mix the drawing with the painting. So that's why they're not all painted. Um, and I on this one, I was really playing with um, foreground background, like um, push and pull of, of what's in front and what's behind and, and then also the layering. So being able to see through uh, uh, some of her, you know, different parts peeking out when I was doing this drawing and painting. So were you surprised when she came wearing uh, African dress also? Yes, I was, because I just, I didn't know what anybody was going to come with. I, they could come into the evening gown if they wanted to. I mean, I really didn't know what people were going to decide to wear. And so, yeah, I was surprised, but I loved it. I loved that she 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 wore this. And it turns out that, um, like, a lot of pattern in the clothing really winds up being um, uh, uh, something really fun to work with in the drawing. So you, you've gotten a lot of compliments so far from the chat box. Uh, Nancy Gray has a question. Do you have a ritual that you go through prior to working on your paintings, drawings, like meditation or music? Do, do you have anything special that you do? I do like to have music when I draw. Um, oftentimes, sometimes I actually listen to audiobooks too. Um, but definitely, um, it's, it's my garage space. I, I should have taken some pictures of my garage space so you could see my actual studio space. Um, my, we have a three car garage and two thirds of it is my studio. <laughs> my husband, the little last part is his. So we have no cars, no cars go in the driveway. <laughs> we don't have any place for them. And uh, I have the garage door is, we have it like shut so it can be opened. And I have paintings, I have old, old, some of my oldest paintings I have on the garage door. Cause I always like to think about where I started with my drawing and painting. Um, I actually, so, and I drew a little bit as a child, uh, but I had a brother, an older brother, seven years older than me, who also was very good with art. And I didn't, I didn't understand that his years of old of age would be, you know, he'd have more skill, he'd have more experience. So I think we both drew something one time. And my mother, she, she, you know, she gave me praise, but she gave him like extra praise because he did a painting. I did a little sketch and he did a painting and I thought oh I'm not that good so I really that I must have been in about third grade maybe I just didn't draw anymore I didn't draw for years and then in high school uh, I was I was in ROTC I was going to go I was going to go to West Point I mean that was my I my eye was set for West Point but my boyfriend was already there and he said he somehow told me that if we got married which we were thinking we we're going to get married uh, that I, we wouldn't be together if we were both officers. And he talked me out of join, going to West Point. So I thought, well, what else am I gonna do if I don't go to in the military? So I thought, I liked architecture. I thought maybe not, uh, I thought maybe I'd do interior design because even though I liked architecture, I hated math. And I didn't want to, I was thinking oh, they're gonna give me all kinds of advanced math and I don't wanna do that. So I thought maybe interior design, turns out you need math for that too. but. I had to take some drawing classes, um, you know, electives for the for the interior design, and I took my first figure drawing class, and uh, it was nudes. I was 18, and I didn't know it was going to be nudes. I remember being in complete shock when I sat there and the naked person was <laughs> in front of me. And then, but they give you these exercises in in, um, in figure drawing class where the model changes poses first every 30 seconds and then every minute and every two minutes and it, it gradually gets longer and longer. So by the time you get to the long pose, you're not looking at the naked body, you're looking at the shapes that the body's making and trying to draw them. And I saw that, wow, I have some skill. I didn't know I could do this. Um, and suddenly I was like, I don't want to do interior design after all I got to do something else but I didn't know what to do with my talent this was back in 1982 um, I didn't know what to do with my talent back then so, so I we have a, a question here from the chat box mm -hmm. uh, 
Do you feel that art can help women to express themselves in today's stressful environment? And if so, do you suggest more women explore art as a form of stress relief in therapy? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it, you, know, you don't have to draw like me. Uh, there's sculpture, there's fiber arts, there's, um, there's just so many uh, ways to make art. I do, though, um, I do love classes, uh, at least in the beginning, it, you know, hopefully either on Zoom, I think it's still, you know, where you might be able to be in a group with other people and exchange ideas and see what other people are doing. Mm -hmm. Or if you can get into a classroom that might be a limited small class. Um, I do think that it's important for networking with other artists um, and, and, and inspiration and just learning techniques and sharing ideas. Um, I just feel like um, I've grown, I've grown exponentially as an artist doing that versus if I had just been trying to do it all by myself and not mm -hmm. where to go and not having that inspiration and not so, so, so as I was saying that I didn't know I could draw as a child, I also thought that you had to be like Rembrandt to draw. My mother worked three jobs at one point and couldn't take up me to galleries and stuff. I didn't get to see other art. So I also think it's really important if you have kids or, or um, you know, anybody in your life that, that has a penchant for art, shows some talent, get them out to see some artwork, get them to some shows so they can right. see that what that there's really no limitations to what you can do. So let's let's are. take a look at the at the next slide. This is the so, same piece in the gallery. This is what it looks like up up on the wall. And unfortunately, you know, I can't get the color in a photo in the gallery <laughs> to be as right. good as the photos I took, but you can see the space it takes in the wall. Let's let's go to the next slide. And that's a a, a, lar a larger shot of the pieces hanging in the gallery. Yes, and we're going to start moving to the ones on the right. Okay, so let, let's photo. move to the to the next slide. So this is Gloria Ray. Um, she was a really good friend of mine. She is a really good friend of my dad's. Well, my dad's passed away, so um, my dad was a really good friend of hers, and um, I've uh, I just always loved. Uh, I loved talking to her. I love her, her, uh, how smart she is, um, how uh, engaging she is to to listen to, and I just wanted to include her in my in my in this work I was doing. So I reached out to her, and she says, "Yes, I'll you know I'd love to." Um, well, she's um, she was just recently elected to the um, to the Alamo Community College Board. Or yeah. St. Phillips, uh, well, she represents uh, a district in the historically black section of San Antonio. Uh, let, let's take a look at her portrait, or I'm sorry, her picture, like uh, some of the pictures that you took of her. Let's advance the slide, please. So this is from her, some of her dancing, and it was me. This is me playing around with how I might. What what I would do is I take the background out of the pictures and I pop them in a PowerPoint, and I sit mm -hmm. and I figure out. You know, I lay them out in different ways to till I find something that I think I want to try to draw when I, you know, that is a composition that that I like. Okay, let's next slide, please. So as you see, uh, the portrait for her is, doesn't look exactly like the one that you saw, but you can see some of those poses are in this okay. that, that my start of this drawing painting of her. Next slide. And here she's on hers is one of the ones that I did some really brave experimenting with. I did these line drawings of her on mylar and then I covered them with glitter. They, they're covered with black glitter. And then I cut them out. Originally I wanted to hang them from the ceiling and let them dangle in front of the painting. But I didn't know if I'd be able to do that at the carver and I didn't know how well it would work. So I winded up just attaching them to the painting, which was very difficult. Well, that, let's go to the next slide so everybody can see what, what both of those look like together. So you did the painting and then the, the outlines of glitter, you, you attached those to the painting. Yes, yes. 
Um, I really uh, loved this. Uh, it's one of my favorite pieces, and it, uh, but it was the hardest, probably the hardest painting that I did of all of them because of me trying to attach those. This paper does not like to have anything glued to it. So it took me, I had all kinds of glues I bought to try to figure out which one would let these stick. And it turned out to be the messiest glue of all of them. So I had to be super, super careful to not ruin the painting underneath because it's watercolor. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I could actually wipe the watercolor completely off real, you know, easily. So I had to be really gentle, but I, I love the end result. Next slide. That's a close-up. Yeah, this is a close-up where you can kind of see um, the glitter and the 3D effect that it has on the painting. You know, um, in the conversation that uh, that, that we had with uh, the, your muses, all of the ladies that you painted, um, I what struck me was their reactions. Uh, I asked them the question, you know, how did it feel um, or how did you feel when um, you saw your, your portrait hanging in a gallery? Um, and all of them, I mean, phenomenal ladies, accomplished ladies and, and young ladies too, uh, but I was really struck by how they all were so honored and excited and, and just happy to be celebrated and, and seeing themselves. Um, how important do you think it is for women of color to see themselves in these spaces? Oh, he, hugely. Um, and that, that was the thing. Um, I, I, knowing the Carver's history and everything um, and how, you know, what an important place it is to San Antonio and the black community in San Antonio, I wanted people to be able to see themselves or see people that they knew on the walls. Um, and that's why I didn't go, I didn't just do like fa famous people. I wanted everyday people from San Antonio. I wanted San Antonians. That's what I wanted to paint. Women that I knew or people at least that I knew didn't necessarily have to be from San Antonio, but I wanted to be people that I actually knew that were um, just regular women that were doing remarkable things or just uh, just being who they were, just being themselves. Um, so who, who are we looking at here? So this is Janet Scott, another really dear friend of my father's. Uh, and, uh, I always would see her at the at the different balls, always on the dance floor. Always, always, always. And um, I heard she had an illness. She never really talked to me about it, but she, I, I heard from other friends of hers who um, told me she'd had a really bad illness a few years ago that nearly took her life. It was really uh, a debilitating illness. And she's come back um, wonderfully, but she doesn't move as she used to. She's a little stiffer mm -hmm. now, but she still loves to dance. She's still, it's her passion. She will, if you, anything, if she got invited to something today and there was music, she'd be on the dance floor. Um, and yes. I love that about her. So I, immediately I'm like, I have to get, I need Janet Scott. I want Janet Scott in my portraits. So let's, let's take a look at the next slide. So that, that's her video. And yeah, she's petite, she's very petite. But she <laughs> yeah, she's very petite. In her, in her uh, audio piece, she talks about how uh, she loves um, Paula Abdul because she's small like her. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. You know, when I um, when I spoke to her, um, asking her, you know, why did she choose what she wore? I remember her t just telling me about her fabulous life of, of public service. She and her husband were public servants, and they traveled all over the world, but spent quite a bit of time in. Um, various African countries. And she said she'd had this blouse for a long time and it was just her favorite. It's her favorite, she said, yeah. Next slide. So this was the beginning of, of hers. Yeah, the beginning of her, of her drawing. So uh, a question from the, from the audience. How did you discover your technique, and, and like when did you get confident that uh, enough to like think that you would would sell your artwork? Um, so um, th that was the whole. Uh, well, I guess first of all was getting that best in show at the Southwest School for it was a self portrait. Um, I wish I had the picture. Um, it, it was a mannequin, 
with me, um, the idea was it's the mannequin is in front and I'm standing behind the mannequin with my hips on the, on the hips of the mannequin, my arms on the hips of the mannequin and my head over the neck. It was one of those dress mannequins that didn't have a head. And I'm looking at myself in the mirror and I'm imagining my, the perfect body shape. Um, and I called it Ode to Perfection. And I got a best in show award for that portrait. And that kind of made me think, okay, I should try to take more classes. And, and my husband too, he always thought this was a hobby before, you know, from 1980, uh, 1989 when I met him to uh, 1995, uh, sorry. Yeah, 1990, 2007 when I did that portrait, the sub-portrait. Mm -hmm. He always thought it was a hobby. And then once I got that award, he understood I was going to go for something more serious. And he was very supportive of it. And uh, then... Uh, it just, it just have to just, I joined some groups. Uh, that was another thing that really was helpful to me. I joined art organizations. The first one I joined happened to be one of the teachers at the Southwest school had been, had a lot of female students going up to her and asking her all kinds of questions about being an art. She was a super um, successful artist, um, had, uh, was well known in New York and other, and all over, all over the place. And so she started this women's group, the, the, the Gentile as she ages. We call the group Gaga for short because the name's mm -hmm. so long. And uh, I, when I joined that group, I started, you know, I could be in different shows and I, I only needed to have one painting, but it started helping me build my resume and helping me learn a little bit about the gallery process. Okay. And also through that group, I got to curate some shows. I had curated three shows at the Bijou when they used to have a gallery there, the Bijou a Theater had a had a gallery in the foyer and I was able to curate shows of Gaga members because by then the Gaga group had grown to like, I don't know, I think we were like 50 or 70 members. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would curate 10 women from the group um, and, and I got to design an exhibition. And so I got to learn a little bit more about the gallery process from that. Okay. Um, so let's, let's look at the finished product of, of this particular portrait. And I, I see there's like a blue silhouette there to the left side. What, yes, what, so th this is my other one that has um, some experimentation. There's two things that are experimental on this, which is the blue glitter silhouette. Um, I want to do more glitter silhouettes, but I started running out of time. So this is why this is the only one that has the glitter silhouette uh, to make, to make the, my show. And the other thing that was uh, unique on this one is the center portrait. It's on Mylar. It's painted on the back side of the mylar and then attached on top of this painting. The so, one that's in the very middle. In the very middle. Um, so I, I just, I just love to. I get ideas and I just want to try them out and see what happens. I've just kind of gotten a little, little brave. Some of that is from watching other artists. Really, there's a, um, and I was actually noticing that all my favorite artists, the artists that I think are doing the most exciting work, are black artists um, right now. Um, and and I, I I look at a lot of black artists. There's some a, lo a few local artists that I follow too that aren't not, are not black, but most of the ones that I look at that are really doing super well are black artists. And I just they're so they're doing so many experimental and cool things, and I, it just encourages me to try out my own crazy ideas. Okay. And, uh, so well, I, let's, let's... I have to be non traditional in my approach. Let's, let's keep moving through the exhibit. Let's advance the slide, please. What, what is that? Just, okay, there you yeah, go. Now, now moving over to our, towards Roslyn. I had a little bit of her on the far right on that previous slide. So this okay, is Roslyn so Anderson. Rosie Anderson, and let's go to the next slide. She's the, she's the third portrait I worked on. And, uh, I made I made edits to hers as I worked through it, okay. but I loved. She was the second person who danced for me. <laughs> and I love her dancing images. Um, she she loves to dance. She finds so much joy in it, and that's what I saw when she danced for me. Um, she danced to Ladies Night, Cool in the Gang. <laughs> I still remember, and I was not in the room. Uh, she was just having a great time when she was dancing and I just loved her, her, the different things she did, you know, she's very, a very expressionistic dancer. Um, and, uh, 
Anyway, so this is like my composition, one of the, my testing compositions. Okay, so let's advance the slide and, and see the, the portrait. This is in this progress. Is this is me like trying stuff out. So I actually, you know, was like, do I like this? I wanted to add something, change something. So I took a photo of what I had and then I brought it into Photoshop and I started layering the photos I had with it and uh, to just see how I wanted to adjust the composition. Uh, before I went, before I continued. Okay, so next slide. Process. And so this is the final, this is the final portrait that mixes the drawing with the painting. Um, and everybody who's seen it that knows her, everybody's saying, yep, they know that it was Rosalind, Rosalind when they saw it. Saw it. And uh, thought that I had somebody tell me wow, that painting is alive when I saw it. <laughs> I, get, I get a lot of compliments on this one. Okay, well, let, let's go to the next portrait. Now, or, like, who, who are we looking at here? We're looking at Glory Jones. She's the only woman in the show that I did not know. I approached her. I saw her at Brick at the Blue Star one day. I was there for an event and she happened to be there. Um, and there was just something about her that I loved. I loved her, something about her style, and um, I just wanted to paint her. So I, I approached her and asked her if she'd be interested, and she said, sure, and she did call me up, and and so I got her to come for this photo shoot. And when she walked in the room, oh, she just lit up the, the space that we that I was in. My Me and my friend Shelly just got a big smile when we saw her because she just was, she just had this beautiful, uh, joyful personality that just exuded, just came out of her pores. And uh, let's advance the slides. So here, here's another look at, at the paintings hung in the gallery. So um, yeah, something got out of order, so my apologies. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Rosalind and, uh, and my niece on the right hand side, Erilyn. All right, let's advance the slide, then we'll take a look at Erilyn. Yeah, we'll oh, get, get back to, to Glory. Um, this is my niece, Erilyn. Uh, she's 17. Um, she's helped me with other art projects. So I was definitely going to get her and her sister. And I also really wanted to have generations in this show, um, not just uh, adult women. I really wanted to get some youth in, in, in the show because it kind of, I feel like it tells the story of womanhood, you know, from mm -hmm. youth to maturity um, in, in one space to have all these generations. Let's go to the next slide. So oh, that's her, her video shoot, right? <laughs> Stop her dancing. She says, she claims that she can't dance. You know, she doesn't think she dances well, but I loved her dancing. She, she's, her, her mother's from Jamaica. And so the song she had was a Jamaican song. So she was kind of hopping around when she was dancing. <laughs> I tease her, I said, both of her parents went to Howard University. She, she better dance, right? <laughs> so next slide. And this is the final portrait of her that I did. Um, and she's about to graduate from high school. So I feel like um, there's something about her about to leave that um, her innocence, and you know, she's gonna about to be a young woman in, in the world going to college. Mm -hmm. And so I, loved, I, I thought about the pink color in the background being somewhat representative of the, the end of her, of her, of her youthful innocence as she moves into the next phase of her life. Beverly Jones says she loves the colors. Um, next slide. Yeah, you can see on that one and on this one of her sister on the left there, um, it's uh, Erlen and this is Elena. Elena's in junior high. I started playing with silhouettes more. I just didn't get to, I just didn't glitter them. On, on Elena's, I couldn't, I, I didn't think I could make the glitter work because of the way I was drawing on top of the silhouettes. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the next slide. We'll, we'll get to take a look at her. There's the other cutie patootie in the series. <laughs> yes, uh, Elena. I love this little girl so much. I love both of my nieces. Um, she, to me, uh, is, a good, is a better dancer than she thinks she is. She's a really good dancer. And she's okay. very expressionist. Her face has so many expressions. She's one who 
uh, would not be able to hide if she was angry or happy or whatever. Her face tells it all. Uh, I, I think she could be an actress personally uh, with as expressive as she is with her face. Let's go to the next slide and, and see her portrait up close. Or I'm sorry, her, her, that's her dancing. Yeah, so the, you can see what, I, what I'm talking about, about her face. <laughs> and just when you're looking at these pictures here that I was playing, you know, trying to think about what I was gonna do for her composition. And so next slide is the portrait up close, right? Okay. Yeah, the portrait up close. And I was really doing a lot. I was experimenting again, like the portrait on the far right, those two, the drawing. I had one drawing, you'll see it kind of like that grayish color silhouette. Um, I was going to do the line drawing of that. I wasn't really happy with the way it was coming out. So I erased it, but some of it stayed a little bit of a ghost of it. So then I decided to do another drawing on top of it and it looks layered. So then I added, um, these portraits have a lot of iridescent paint in them, which unfortunately the camera does not catch. And even some of the lighting in the carver, their, their lighting is not necessarily the best gallery lighting of the carver. So it's not able to catch all the iridescence that I used in some of these portraits. But um, but yeah, this one, that on the right has iridescence. The silhouettes have iridescence. Her portrait, the large colorful portrait of her has a lot of iridescence in the portrait itself on this painting. Okay, let's, let's go to the next slide. So well, tell us what we're looking at here. We're looking at the portrait of uh, San Antonio's poet laureate, Andrea Vocab Sanderson. This was the, the second to the last portrait. I saw this was the last portrait I was able to finish. This was the second to the last portrait. I was getting really close on my time and stuff like that, but I was really liking the way this was coming out. She didn't move a whole lot. She sang one of her songs and she, okay. she didn't move as much as some other women, but she was doing a lot with her arms and and- Let's, uh, let's was, go to the next slide so we can see the, the pictures. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so Shelly had a lot of fun. Uh, you know, she, she, I, I, I told Shelly what I wanted, but I also let Shelly do her thing in, in, as a photographer. And so, you know, she had, uh, she had them jump or, or do different things with, with vocab. She had her play with her hair mm -hmm. and uh, she just looked like a goddess to me, a vocab to me when I saw oh. her, when she put on her red dress, I just, Actually, the Black Venus in my title, it's somewhat inspired by her and what she wore. Let's go this to the next slide. Reminded me of a Greek goddess. And then the next one, the next slide. So this is how you, it all came together then. Yeah, this with the this is me working on my, my composition of her um, for my portrait. Next slide, we'll see the, the painting. And I was, I, I really felt like there was something ethereal happening. I, so I was going to cut this up near the bottom of her dress. And when I painted the middle one first, because I wanted to do those two black drawings on over, uh, I did get the dress painted before I could draw on top of it. Um, and the paint started to drip. And I said, oh, we're not cutting this. I like these drips. And then, then I kind of had the idea of letting all the dresses drip and doing different. Her dress was a, somewhat of an, ir had iridescence in her actual dress that she wore. In certain light, it looked different colors. And so I got the idea of painting these different shades uh, for her dress. And then just you know, she, beautiful, th what she does. I feel like when she performs and stuff, she just, you know, if you meet her, she seems unassuming, but then when she performs or when she speaks, but when she's on stage singing, cause she belongs, she sings with a group uh, for an arm and, and, and on her own. And she's just doing all kinds of incredible things in the city right now. Um, she's just such, she transforms. So, you know, and thinking about her being poet laureate and then this, this exhibition and the NCNW, our, our mission, um, do you believe that more more black art out in the world will uplift really uplifts all art i think so i think so i i, I again to me the black artists are doing really incredible stuff that's on, on par with any other art form that's out there 
Um, and it's just a, another part of the American, you know, they're telling another part of the American story, right? Um, through their art and what's happening in, in, uh, in their experiences. So definitely. This looks, this is another tall portrait. Like I, I love how the yeah. light's coming through the window there. Um, yeah, so this is the portrait of, of uh, uh, Glory Jones. And uh, that because of her vivacious, oozing, joyful personality, I, she was a tall girl as it was. And I just wanted to make her larger than life. And so instead of going horizontal with hers, hers is eight feet tall um, by five feet wide, her portrait. Mm -hmm. to, uh, next slide. Then we can get a peek at behind the scenes. <laughs> okay. And advance one more. This is the, the portrait that Shelly shows in the gallery. We loved her shoes, so she decided to put the shoes in with the portrait. <laughs> Even though I was doing good <laughs> with it, we just loved her, her shoes. And her sock. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So next next slide. And she was another one. She danced. Uh, she was just, I loved the way she moved when she was dancing. I just, uh, she just was having fun uh, for me with, you know, with, with the song that she picked. Next slide. And so again, I'm trying I to like the drawing with the painting. Um, of course, my favorite is the, 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 the actual portrait on the top. Um, I really love the way they came out. The, this paper is is very temperamental. You know, I have to. Um, you can you you put things on. You can actually take off accidentally take off something you meant that you like that you meant to leave, and so, and then just trying to work with it. It's it's. I don't know why I. I guess because I want to do something different. I want to use a material that I don't see a lot of people using, and I want to use it in a way that I don't see a lot of people. So I'm just trying to keep perfecting and perfecting as this being my, my mm -hmm. thing. So can you advance the slides? Next slide, please. We saw all the portraits, but I think a lot of people don't know what really goes into, you know, not just painting the portraits, but putting an installation together. It, it's, it's a lot of hard work. Um, yeah. What are we looking at here? So we're uh, we're working on Gracie Pose, where it's going to go. I, ha I had to buy a laser level for it. Um, my one of my instructors, the one who was teaching that drawing large large scale cl class, who has been in many many exhibitions, um, offered to help me with this installation, and, and another girlfriend of mine. So uh, we're trying to to set where we're going to put the painting, the first line that we can line it up across, straight. All right. Um, next slide. And you know, just uh, yeah, he's, he had this method of you know marking where things were going to go, and so he would put tape on himself, and then when he would climb the ladder, he wouldn't have to ask for tape or worry about you know he had already cut and just could grab it and and make make some marks because this show is hung with magnets. There's no there there are screws on the walls, and the paper, and then magnets. Unfortunately, they're so big I could not afford to frame them all. There was just like no way I could afford to frame those. Although if somebody, you know, when people buy them, I will, will be um, uh, directing them to a uh, uh, plexiglass method for, um, for displaying them. To, I would I encourage plexiglass to protect them. So all of the portraits are, are for sale? Yes. Okay. Um, next slide. This is the wall where Shelley's portraits are hanging, the photos. Unfortunately, I, 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 I put them throughout the exhibit these this deck because you can't get a picture of them good because the, the glass is too reflective mm -hmm. okay next slide this is one of my friends did a selfie as she was helping us with uh shelly's wall okay so it's just this is another person from my crew me uh, i tried to get up on the ladder where the girl on the right was and i got a little bit of a height a fear of heights <laughs> so I had to come down and ask her to go up in my place. Okay, <laughs> next slide. And then this is the the signage that my friend designed. What uh, one of my friends 
design for me. I am a graphic designer and I could design signage, but I w had too many other things to deal with. So I just reached out to a good friend of mine. Okay, and uh, the last slide. Well, that's uh, for, the late, for, for the <laughs> folks that aren't from San Antonio, this is a picture of the front of the Carver Center. And I mean, that's the, that's, that's the building that's, that's been there forever on, on uh, it's Center and Hackberry Street in the uh, east side of San Antonio. Um, so uh, what's next? Uh, I think what's the next slide might take us there. <laughs> So let's advance the slide. Yeah, so there's your question, Stephanie. What's next? Yeah, what's next? <laughs> next slide. Okay. So, uh, but what, before you play, hit that. Let me, let me, let me. Um, you probably want to get that to the beginning. Uh, so, some a couple of things that something that came out of this when I didn't when I found out I was going to have the show, but I was not going to be able to have a reception. I thought, how can I get uh, some interest in my show? And also my niece, Erilyn, these are, I painted, both of these women are in my show. Um, she is a phenomenal singer, uh, songwriter. She's, she's self-taught, she's only 17, but she's been teaching herself how to write songs and she taught herself a little keyboard. And I just think she's phenomenal. And so I wanted her to have a mentor opportunity with our poet laureate. And I looked well, around the studio and I, said, I looked around my studio and I said, hey, wait a minute, I could have them do something uh, based on my show. And it would give me an opportunity to give my, to create this mentorship for my niece um, that celebrates women, write a song that celebrates women. So, so this you're is gonna the, hear, this, you're gonna this hear this is song. The, so this is the 17 year old in our poet laureate of San Antonio. And our, we're looking at shots of them performing or is, yes. is what are they doing so uh well we're we're trying to make a video to go with the song and yours truly is trying to edit the video <laughs> it's not finished yet um so i was hoping i would have the video for tonight but we're still we ran into some technical issues and we're having to reshoot some things but so i we have the, the song so, so we have the audio of, of the song yeah and we'll be using these are pictures. Some of these, this, these images will be in the video, but there'll be some other images incorporated as well. So you're giving us a sneak peek. You're getting a sneak peek. You're an exclusive. You're getting an, an NCNW exclusive. Okay, let's let's take a listen. <laughs> okay, we can start the audio. Yeah. I think she's trying to check her settings. If not, if you sh if you can share with me, I can play it too. But I, well, there you go. There's something about the way she moves. Her vibe goes unopposed. She carries herself with pride and afraid, yet she thrives. Her style is gold. Only someone the way we do with that boss attitude. Got that divine confidence from souls heaven sent. It's the glorious way. Look at how she moves, look at how she grooves, hey, yeah, yeah. it's the glorious way, the glorious way you move, you move, you move, you move. look at how she moves, look at how she grooves, it's the glorious way, the glorious way you She grinds hard and earns her pay. She don't need a man to save the day. Oh, she moves so melodic. She grooves so exotic. That woman slays. She's ambitious to the max. Yeah, she's got us in a trance. From her head to her toes, she's a queen on the throne. It's the summer, summer. Does 
the rhythm come from her heritage? Is the tempo derived from the soul inside? The clucking of mother tongue, like a new ragtime spanning the space of diaspora, spanning the length and breadth of water-filled bodies, from a salty sea to satin soft skin, racing from ocean through tide rolling of the torso and hips. Watch her slip into a glorious transcendental, guided by instrumental, compelling every glance when she's raptured by the Snapping, so yes, yeah, snaps. <laughs> well, I, I wish I wish uh, I could have shared the actual audio file, but I can't really share the actual audio file yet with anybody. So otherwise, I would have had them play the actual. You could hear more of the instruments in it, but you get definitely can see her song writing. Um, well, thank you, thank you for the sneak peek. Um, so what what else is is coming up with this exhi exhibition? Anything else? So, uh, oh, here's a picture of them in the studio because they did do a, they did the Carver recording, but they also did a studio recording. And that's where my technical issues are happening because the studio, the, I can't get the lip syncing uh -huh. to work. So we're going to film some more to get the lip syncing. Okay. Video. So but, more, but that, it sounds great. They did a great job on this. Okay. Next slide. Okay. So this is, uh, I'm trying to apply for Luminaria. Uh, it's a Luminaria grant. Um, tell, tell everybody what Luminaria is. I, I, yeah, I'm about to. Uh, Luminaria, it's a it's a Lumin, San Antonio Lumin Arts, Luminaria uh, Arts Festival, which happens in the fall. It usually happens. It's a one, usually a one-night event that happens during daylight savings time. The first, the first weekend or the first Friday or Saturday of daylight savings time. Excuse me. And uh, they, they celebrate... Uh, uh, visual arts, music, dance, theater, all the arts, all the performing arts. Um, usually around, um, they do it around Hemisphere Plaza, but they've had it in other places, a couple of other locations over the years. They've been doing it for more than 10 years now, I believe. I think last year might've been their 10 year anniversary. And, okay. uh, and so I, I applied for the grant and I wanna use the dancing images. I wanna make these silhouettes. Um, you can play it and I can talk while you play it because there's the music. Um, I want to make these dancing silhouettes. I want to have maybe the 26 women plus maybe up to another 15 to 20 women. And uh, I would uh, have a wall that's about at least six foot high and maybe 10 foot wide with some side walls and the video would wrap inside. The wall would be covered with a translucent kind of material. So they'll look like holograms. You could see them from both sides of the wall with the projection on them. And people could go in and dance with them and do selfies and stuff. And it would be just like a celebration piece. Um, yeah. that's, that's what I, that's what I put in my proposal. I should find out in about another week, whether or not my proposal is accepted. So my fingers are crossed. So we're sending you all the positive vibes that, that that you get accepted for that. <laughs> yeah, I, so. I think it'll be fun for uh, even these women to look for their silhouettes or their friends to find, you know, their silhouettes in the piece. Mm -hmm. So this is all of your muses for this particular uh, series of portraits coming got, together in this video. I got about six of them in this. Um, okay. For this, this is, this is about to end. Um, I, I, I posted two small of them on uh, Instagram, on my Instagram account. So you can mm -hmm. find them there with words, uh, text incorporated. Okay. So let's, I let's have go to the... The Glorious Way She Moves song will probably be the music playing with it. <laughs> yeah. So, 
so, then more portraits. I have more portraits to do. I, these are at least the ones that I have on my plate right now. Eventually, I hope to get more, more, uh, do another photo shoot um, in the future and get even more women because I think this is going to be my work going forward. This will be my life's work, I think, doing these portraits of women. Yeah, you know, uh, and I just realized uh, there you have me stuck in there, and I wore my pearls. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I thought I'd surprise you, too, Stephanie. <laughs> you haven't seen me playing with some of the other women's portraits yet. Well, this is fabulous. Um, let, let's go to the last slide. So this is how everyone can find your work and we'll, we'll drop a link in the chat box here before we end. Uh, but I wanted to open the floor up to the audience. Um, if anyone has any questions or comments for uh, Barbara. I am Dr. Molly Williams. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes, Dr. Molly. Yes, Ms. Felix, President Anderson, Ms. Collier, uh, the Ruth Jones McClendon section, and all of the NCNW uh, presidents, members, and friends that are here. This has been absolutely amazing. Thank absolutely you. Absolutely amazing. So brilliant. What a beautiful way to spend a Saturday evening. I feel revivified. Oh. So honored to be here and to be a part of this most splendiferous occasion. How <laughs> gifted and how beautiful this has been. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. It has been my honor and pleasure to be here. I look forward to coming to San Antonio. And oh, yes, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> we, we can't wait to see you. Yes, I look forward to it. beautiful work. Thank you. We you know, Dr. Molly, uh, a few weeks ago, we had um, the NCNW had the National Symposium and one of the speakers, uh, he said something that just really, really resonated with me and listening to Barbara talk about how she um, she was as a child, she, she drew, but then she lost confidence and she came back to it listening to some of the stories, and I encourage everybody to listen to the audio of, of each of the muses. Um, I, I grew up knowing these ladies, and, and I was also struck by how uh, a lot of them, you know, they wanted to do things, but, you know, it didn't always work out. But, you know, in the end, it, it worked out for them. You know, and even for myself, I wanted to always go into radio, television, and film, but my mother said, oh, no, you need a real degree. You, need, you don't teach school. <laughs> He's like, you need to earn some money. <laughs> uh, and so this is really full circle for me, getting to do what I, I really like to do. Uh, but the speaker, and I'll share this and I'll, I'll turn it back over to President Anderson. The speaker left us with, you know, with everything going on around us, with COVID, with uh, storms, with, with uh, just everything in the last year, don't forget to close your eyes and dream. And that's what I feel like Barbara has captured on, in her portraits is, is the hopes, the dreams, the inspirations, the aspirations, the, just all of the beautiful wonderfulness of these ladies and, uh, and of all of us. And so, and so for that, Barbara, I salute you. Thank you. <laughs> and I salute all of the ladies who joined us this evening. So thank you all for supporting our art section. I will say that when you, if you listen to the audio, um, so what happened was I had to write the piece about how my show went with life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And as we were writing that, I started thinking about the things that these women did in their lives, their jobs, their livelihoods to go with that piece of it. And so I called a couple of them. Janet Scott was the first one that I talked to. And she's telling me about all these places she traveled to. And I was like, oh my God, this is so interesting. But I didn't just, I don't, I, I have a, I'm a huge audio file. And so the idea of just, you know, taking that what she said and writing it down and having it for people to read, it wasn't, I wanted to hear her voice. I wanted people to hear her voice talking about her life story. And then um, when I decided, the carver actually asked me then, because we, initially we only had the artist statement and the, the, the way it's written is you see their names on one paragraph and you see their jobs on the second. And he's like, everybody's wondering who is this person? Who did that? Who's the person who, who traveled? Who's the person who, uh, worked for IBM. Who's the, you know, they were asking. 
So that's where we got the idea. He goes, can, can you write something? I said, no, no, I had a better idea. Let me do, I'll get their audio and then we'll use QR code. So you can go in with your cell phone. If you go to the gallery, you can do it online, but you can also go to the gallery and, and listen in the gallery while you're looking at the portrait to their them talk. And Boy, technology, uh, technology is something else. Like that's, so you don't have to do the headphones anymore. No, you uh, can no just headphones, no touch the, anybody's stuff, you know. You can scan the code and hear it and it'll come up on your phone. Yeah, and then uh, I, I, when I interviewed them, I asked them questions about their life and their profession, but then I also asked them questions about dance because that's what my show's about. So I asked them things about how they feel about dance. And, and I just thought that um, I asked, I think, just the right questions um, to them. Mm -hmm. And they're, they run from a minute and a half to about six minutes. So they're not that long to listen to. So you know what? I, I just totally, uh, when, when I the presentation came down, I realized we have some other special people. I see some names here. I just want to give a shout out to a few of them. Miss Courtney Fisher, I know she joins, she's joining from Austin. Uh, and uh, I see a few other folks. We, we sent this out on our social media. And um, so I see a lot, some of the names are, are ladies. Yeah, <laughs> she just raised her hand. Well, thank you for being here. And, um, and ladies, if you want to turn your cameras on, you can now. Um, so that we can see your beautiful faces. And before you, before you sign off, we got to take a group picture, right? So President Anderson, I'll, I will uh, turn everything back over to you. Thank you, Sister Stephanie. I appreciate you so much hosting. Uh, you did a fabulous job. Thank you, Sister Barbara, the muse that has just brightened our lives today. I mean, this is so encouraging. The artwork was fabulous. I just felt like I was moving along with the ladies and dancing. It was just phenomenal. And our own Madam Convener, Dr. Molly Williams, what can I say? You have graced us with your presence. And I am just so, so thankful for your words today and just for you just being here and with your support. I really appreciate it. And for the other presidents online, we have Austin online, we have Houston, we have, uh, I think, Fort Worth. Um, I just really appreciate all of you all being here with us, my sisters, on our first virtual event. I am thankful for sisters, affiliate sisters as well, uh, representing yes. Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated and the top ladies of distinction. Thank you. Thank you to my officers and thank you to the chairs of this fabulous, fabulous event to our chair, Stephanie Collier. And last but not least, we have the most fabulous tech chair in the Ooh, universe. Yes, yes. Uh, Ms. Danielle Johnson, take away, please. She is our yes, wonderful tech chair. Go. She keeps us uh, on point in this 21st century. And we are so thankful for her and her committee and what they do. And I just President wanna thank Anderson, you all for Excuse yes. me, I saw, I see Dr. Lewis has her hand up, I believe. Dr. She... Lewis, yes, go right ahead. Yes, ma'am. Oh, she's saying sorry. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> no problem. And if you all don't mind, I would like to take a picture of those. We had, a at one point, we had 25 people online today, and I think that is fabulous for a first-time virtual event. So thank you. And I'm going to do it the old school way, or, or if uh, our tech person, uh, Madam Danielle, do you know how to take the picture? Oh, okay. See, <laughs> I told you I was going to wait. I was going to get out the cell phone. <laughs> okay, so give everybody a minute to get their, cam their cameras, get their cameras on. situated. Yes, and please. Hello, Madam Historian. How are you? Hello, Madam First Vice. She's on as well. Hello, hello. Doing yes. pretty good. Here we are. Okay, tell hello, us when, Danielle. Hello, Danielle. Hello, Danielle. Danielle. She got it. She gave the thumbs All right. up. All right. <laughs> Yay. Well, we are right on time. It is 